Now let's look at the exit time property. To experiment with this property, we'll need a transition. And we'll also need two timelines. Now right now we have two, one called go right, where the box moves from left to right. And then we also have another one called go left, where the square will move from the right side to the left side. Now let's go back to the state machine and get this set up. So we already have the go right animation. So we need to add the go left animation and then create a transition from go right to go left. So we can click and drag to create our transition. Then you can see that we have it now. And if we press play, you'll see that our state machine instantly jumps from the go right to the go left animation and then plays that one. So we never actually see that first animation play. We just see going right to left. Now the problem here is that we don't have any conditions or inputs to control it. So we're gonna to need to use our properties in the transition to actually play the entire first animation uh, and then play the second animation. Because what's happening right now is that we're just getting this first animation skipped over. So we don't actually see any of this right here. And all we see is the, uh, the square starting in the right position and then going to the left. So to do this, we'll need to use the property called exit time. To activate it, we'll need to use this little checkbox here. Now that we've got it clicked, it's active. And this right here shows us how much time needs to play, or we can use a percentage like 100%. So right now what we're saying is that the entire animation needs to play and then the transition can happen. Again, we can use time or present values. Now let's play the animation and see what happens. As you can see, we played the entire first animation and then the second animation played. So this is essentially what we were looking for at the beginning. Now we can create a loop by creating another transition from uh, the second animation to the first. So let's do that. And then we'll go in and activate the exit time and do 100% on this one as well. And this will give us a looping animation. So let's play the state machine. And as you can see, we go back and forth uh, and each animation plays before transitioning back to the other one. Now let's look at a second example. In this case, we've got three different squares, each with its own timeline that moves it from the left side to the right side. So we've got the red timeline, the blue timeline, and the green timeline. If you look at the state machine, you can see that we have the red state added. So if we play the state machine, you'll see that the only thing that moves is the red square. But we want to have all of the different squares actually move. So we're going to use exit time so that when the red gets to the end, the blue moves. And then when the blue gets to the end, the green moves. So let's go ahead and set this up. And we're going to add both states and then create transitions from red to blue and then from blue to green. Now, if we play our state machine, you'll see that it skips all the way to the green animation. And we have the same problem as before. Because we don't have any conditions or inputs, uh, what we're doing is we're skipping over the first two animations so fast that we don't even see it. And then we get to the last animation and it plays that all the way through. So what we're going to do is go in and use the exit time once again, checking the exit time and then putting 100%. So we'll play the first animation completely. Now let's do it on the second one. Uh, check that and go to 100% there. And so now we should play each animation in sequence. So we'll start with the red animation, then have the blue animation happen, and then the green. So there's red, blue, and green. Up until this point, we've been using 100% exit time, but we could change this to let's say 50% exit time, and that'll only play half of the animation before transitioning. Uh, we could also use milliseconds if we wanted. So let's play this back and see what happens. As you can see, the red and blue animations only played halfway and then transitioned to the final animation, which played all the way through. So remember, we can play with these values depending on what we need. If you want to use a time value, you just need to type in the number. But if you want to use a percentage, make sure you throw that little percent sign on the end. Let's look at one last example where we combine both duration and exit time. In this example, we've got two different timelines called left and right. 
Now, there's single key timelines where we're controlling the rotation of this rectangle. The first one keys our rectangle to the left here, and the second one keys the rotation to the right. Now, let's go to the state machine and see how it's set up. So we've got both animations with a two-way transition, and each one of these transitions will add an exit time of 100%. Now, if we press play, you'll see that they snap back and forth from position to position. Now, the reason the snapping is happening is because we don't actually have any duration. So it's at zero, uh, which means that there's no visible transition from one to the other. So what we're going to do is select both of our transitions at the same time and add some duration value. So we're going to go with, let's say, 500 milliseconds here. And once we do that, we can play it, and you can see that there's now a smooth transition from one state to the next. Now, to make this transition look even better, let's add some cubic interpolation because that linear is just so boring. Uh, so we'll add the cubic, and then we can go ahead and play it again and see how it looks. So as you can see, we can also create animations using our transitions, exit time, and duration.